Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the mean, median and mode so we can answer questions from exercise 2a and b. So hopefully this will be very familiar to you, a little bit of new notation but that's all that uh, will be really new here. So these uh, types of measures are called measures of central tendency. So it's where our data is roughly, um, how, we, how we can represent our data just using one value um, to represent the whole group of data. Uh, so we've got the mode, which is the highest frequency um, piece of data. The median is the middle value when we put them into ascending order. And the mean is when we calculate all of them added up divided by how many there are. And you've got a little bit of new notation here. So it's um, this uh, Greek letter here, it's capital sigma, the Greek letter sigma. And what this means effectively is if we have lots of different x values, say 3, 4 and 6, then what sigma x means is that we just add all of these numbers together so in fact here sigma x would represent 13 and if we're dividing by n where there are three numbers here so divide by n we would effectively be dividing by 3 so here we would get 4.3 recurring so that would, what would be the mean out of these three values okay so just a little bit of new notation here when you see sigma x it means add up all of the values and when it's n, n is referring to how many pieces of data you have. The x bar here is another way of us writing the mean. Okay, So get used to that notation there. That When you've got an x with a bar on top, it means the um, mean of all of those x values. So we've got the sum of x's and n is the number of bits of data. Okay, so this is the proper notation that we're going to use. What we're going to look at first, however, is uh, a little question that combines two means together. So we've got two separate means here, a 6.4 from an observation of 25 uh, pieces of data, and a second observation of a sample of 30 uh, observations is 7.2. Calculate the mean of all 55 values. Well, surely it could just be work out the middle value uh, between those two means. Uh, but this isn't quite right. What, what we should really have is, because we have more values in this group of 30, the mean should be more skewed towards the 7.2 than the 6.4, don't you agree? If we've only got 25 observations here and 30 observations here, then surely these 30 observations should carry more weight than these single 25 pieces of data. Okay. So it should be weighted towards the one with a higher quantity. But by how much? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at answering this question now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to the original uh, summation of the data. So for sample 1, what we had was an average of 6.4 and that n value here was 25. So what we can do from here is if we multiply both sides by 25, we work out what all of our x pieces of data were when we add them up and we should have got 160 out of those 25 pieces of data. We can do exactly the same thing for the 30 observations of data. So 7.2 is the mean, times that by 30 and we'll get uh, 216. So if you were to add up all of the pieces of data from sample 2, you will get 216. And then you'd have to divide it by 30 to get you 7.2. So effectively we're working backwards um, up to what the summation of our data is. So now that we know the summation of the two sets of data, we now can work out the total sum of the data is 376 by adding these two values together. And given that there were 55 bits of data in total, then we can just do a simple calculation of 376 divided by 55 equals 6.84. Okay, so we can see here the middle value would have been 6.8, so we can see it's just a slightly higher value than 6.8, uh, more skewed towards the 30 observation sets of data. So this here is an example of how you would calculate the total mean from two groups of data. Okay, so in different situations, you're going to need to be able to decide which... Um, average you're going to use and which one would be more appropriate to use in a certain situation. So let's go through the mode. The mode is used uh, for qualitative data and where the data has been has a single mode or two modal values. The median is used for quantitative data. So you pick out the keywords here of qualitative data. We know that that 
is just a word or a, an expression. Uh, quantitative data here gives a value to it um, and is uh, usually used when the data has some extreme values and we want to um, neglect those extreme values. Um, so the median would just be the midway mark and it really won't be affected by the extreme values. The mean here is more commonly used, um, but not necessarily always appropriate. The mean is used for quantitative data and uses all the data set. It therefore gives a true measure, but can be skewed by extreme values. Okay, so that's really the difference between the median and the mean then. The median um, does not um, get skewed by extreme values. The mean does, but the mean does take into account all the pieces of data from the data set. So where we can, we're going to try and use the mean, but where there are extreme values, we're going to have to get to a slightly less accurate average in the median, but it, it is effectively going to um, not be skewed by those larger or smaller values. And the mode here really would, would just use it for qualitative data. Okay, so another way of writing the mean here is that x bar is equal to the sum of fx over the sum of f. Now this here is particularly true for when we have a frequency table. Now you'll have done this lower down the school at GCSE, but let's see what the notation here means. The sum of fx means the sum of the products of the data values and their frequency. So it's um, the value in the data column times by the frequency column, and then we get we create a third column, remember, and we add all of those up and then divide that by the sum of all the frequencies in each data group, well, that would just be effectively the same as n, the total amount of bits of data. So let's see this in action here. What we have here is effectively x values and effectively frequency values. Okay, so when we come to use our formula, if it says fx, that's not meaning function of x, that's just meaning frequency times the x value, um, it's just going to mean 3 times 45. Okay, so Rebecca is short as a shirt is. Sorry, sorry, let's start again. Rebecca records the shirt collar size X of the male students in her year. The results are shown in the table. For the data, calculate the mode, the median, and the mean. Well, first of all, looking at the mode, that's the easiest one. It's the one with the highest frequency, so it's 34, or it's the group with 34 values, which is the group of 16.5. Uh, centimeters on their color size. So that's 16.5 there. The median here is going to be the middle way mark. So what we need to first do is work out how many pieces of data we've got, okay, which is uh, 95 pieces of data. <clears throat> and the way that we work out the middle value of this is we do 95 plus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so it's always important that you add that 1 before you divide by 2 and work out the median. So this is going to give us the 48th piece of data. Now what we do do is we count down <coughs> through the groups to find the 48th value, and that will be the color size. So it might be a little idea to do a little cumulative frequency just in this corner of this box here. So 3, we've got 20 values up to here. We've got 49 values up to here. We want the 48th value, so therefore the 48th value must exist in this group here, where the color size is 16. So our answer here is 16. Okay, let's have a look at the mean now. So let's use our formula that we have in the top left corner of the page here. This is the sum of f of x divided by the sum of f. So what we need to do here first is create that third column, if you remember, and we times 15 times 3, 55.5 by 17, and we carry on going. And then we add all of these up. So this is effectively a column where we do frequency times data value, and then we sum all of these up. So it's frequency times data value all added up together, and we get uh, 1,537.5, divided by all of the frequencies in total, or the total number of people in our survey, and we do one divided by the other. Hopefully this is familiar to you from GCSE. And here we get x bar, or the mean, is equal to 16.2. Okay, so that's how we work out the value there. Explain why a shirt manufacturer might use the mode for setting their product quota. Well, in this case here, they're not going to um, 
be concerned about getting a, a shirt size of 16.2 because people range in shirt sizes or collar sizes. And um, what they're going to be interested in is which um, shirt or which collar size is more popular with their customers. And that will be the 34 value. Okay, so the mode in this case is more useful as it tells the manufacturer what size of shirts it needs to produce the most of. Okay. Right, so let's have a little look at this question here. The difference between this question and the last one was now we have grouped data um, uh, such as this set of data here. So here we're looking at a random sample of pine cones measured to their nearest millimetre. Um, right down the modal class, well that's again just the most frequent group, so that's 34 to 36 millimetres. Estimate the mean. Well, before we go ahead and do that uh, F times X column, what we need to work out first are these midpoints of this group here. So hopefully this is familiar to you as well. 32.5, 35, and 38. And then what we do is we do the midpoints times by the frequency here. So it's F of X equals... Uh, 30.5 times 2 is 61, 32.5 times 25 is 812.5, 35 times 30 is 1050, 38 times 18 is 494, and then we sum those up together. So the sum of the frequency times the data value equals 2417.5. And we now need to divide this by the total frequency, so all the frequency values added up together gives us how many pine cones they've measured in total. So it's sum of f of x divided by sum of f, and that equals um, 34.5. Okay, so that mean value there is 34.5. Find the median class. Well, if we've got 70 data values here, then it's 71 divided by 2, which is the 35th point fifth value. So in this case here, we're going to try and find the 35th point fifth value. If it's tr straddling two groups, then we'll just find the midpoints between those two groups. In this case here, we'll add the frequencies up and do a little cumulative frequency. But we can clearly see from this 27 value and the 57 value that the 35th point fifth value is going to be somewhere in between here, which means it must be in the group 34 to 36. Okay. So hopefully that was all familiar to you. Pause the video and have a go at this question. Right then, well done for having a go at this question here. So uh, the first of all, write down the value of the modal class. So that'll obviously be the class with the most frequent uh, weekly wage in there. Uh, calculate an estimate for the mean wage. Okay, so the first thing we'll have to do then is I'm going to draw a new column that will work out the values in the midpoints on each of these um, weekly wage um, groups. So the midpoint for the first one is going to be 200. The next one's going to be, now a little formula that you might want to use here to work out the midpoints is 226 plus 300 divided by 2. It effectively finds the midpoint between 226 and 300. And this is going to be 263. So that's what we put in, 263. Um, the next one's going to be 325.5, the next one's going to be 375.5, and the next one's going to be 450.5. And the next thing we do, the key column here is going to be the next one, which is the sum of the, sorry, the frequency times by the data value here, and we'll call that x here. So what we're going to do is 200 times by 4, which is 800 the next thing we do is 8 times uh, 263, which is 1,052. 18 times 325.5 is 5,859. 28 times 375.5 gives you 10,514. And 7 times 450.5 is 3153.5. Okay, so our formula to work out the, um, the mean is the sum of fx over the sum of f. So what we need to do is we need to now add up all of these uh, f times x's, which gives us 21378.5. So this is the sum of fx. 
So remember, fx here is not representing f of x. It's not a function of x. It's just the frequency times data value. And divide by the sum of all the frequencies, or in other words, how many pieces of data we have here, and that is 65. Okay, so doing the division here, and we get 328.9, and that would be pounds. So the mean wage is um, 328.9. Now it does say, an, does say here an estimate, but so this is effectively what we've got as the best estimate. We've put each of the wages into a group, so hence we've reduced the value of the, reduced the accuracy of the data, so hence this is our most accurate approximation. Part C here, write down the interval containing the median. Well, what we do here is if we've got 65 pieces of uh, data, then we use the little formula of n plus 1 divided by 2. n is how many pieces of data we have. So it's 65 plus 1 divided by 2. So that's 66 divided by 2 is 33. So it's the 33rd piece of data. And now we have to go through the groups. So it's, we've got 4 in here. We've got a total of 12 up until this point here. So we're doing a little cumulative frequency. We've got 30 up until this value here. And then we've got 58 up until this group here. So the 33rd value must exist in this group here. So the write down the, write down the interval containing the median. That's going to be 351 to 400. Okay. Right there, so those are the answers to uh, question one on exercise two. We hope this is all familiar to you. Maybe a slight little um, introduction of some notation here, but it's a good opportunity to do so. Right, so thanks very much for watching the video. Have a go at some uh, questions on exercise 2B, particularly the ones with a new notation in, um, and uh, ask a teacher for help if you need any. Thanks very much for watching.